Jan is one of the most deliberated topics in scientific research. Many hypotheses have been thought to explain the reason why we yawn, but yet no one theory has been universally accepted. Today, I will be relating experimental data that I have personally both researched and performed on whether or not yawning is contagious. Contagious yawning in the past has been explained not only as being suggestible from seeing another person yawning, hearing the word yawn repetitively, or merely seeing the word yawn, but is also an expression of empathy based off people's facial expressions. To do this experiment effectively, we must, we must first understand the reason behind spontaneous yawning and how contagious yawning relates. The original theory behind why we yawn goes something like this. When we get tired due to boredom or lethargy, our brains need more oxygen to stay awake. Opening our mouths and inhaling a larger amount of air than normal respiration helps wake ourselves up quicker by pumping more oxygen into the bloodstream and ultimately to the brain. Sounds plausible, right? Well, in actuality, this is completely false. Take, for example, exercising. If we expend more energy under this theory that the brain needs increasing amounts of oxygen, we would have to yawn a great deal while exercising to increase our oxygen supply. When is the last time you remember yawning during your workout? My guess is probably never. This means there is a much more plausible explanation for our need to yawn. Extensive research by Professor Stephen Pladek, a neuroscientist at Georgia Gwinnett College, has led to a new theory for yawning, the brain itself. The brain is, a very, is very intricate and, as we know, the supercenter for regulation of internal body functions, sensory information, and motor control. It knows exactly what it's doing at every moment, and it operates extremely efficiently with little error. So well, you could say it runs like a well-oiled machine. Speaking of machines, let's sidetrack for a moment. For now, let's compare our brain to a computer. To maintain top performance, many electronics, like computers, need to regulate their temperature or their environment. How does a computer do this? Well, if it starts to get too hot, an internal fan kicks on and does this to prevent overheating. We, also, we may also have to move the computer to a different surface or close some programs down. Similarly, the brain has fail safes programmed in to maintain homeostasis. Yawning is the brain's fan or cooling mechanism. The brain uses about 40% of our metabolic energy, which in turn produces a lot of heat, in line with the first law of thermodynamics. In order to preserve our neural pathways, the inhalation of cooler air through both our nasal and oral cavities cools the blood by diffusion and shifts it to the brain, effectively maintaining a homeostatic environment for optimal function. An experiment was performed by Dr. Andrew Gallup of Princeton University. He and his team tested the hypothesis that air cooler than the brain's internal environment effectively regulates temperature through yawning. He and his team found in warmer regions or during warmer seasons, people yawned less than those in cooler regions or cooler seasons, almost by half the amount. So, if yawning is attributed to temperature control of an internal environment, why do we have the urge to yawn when we see others yawn? Many hypotheses explore contagious yawning's culprit being due to an empathetic response. When we empathize with people, we put ourselves in the other's shoes thereby understanding and sharing their feelings. Empathy is a social behavior that is taught early in development and starts to be exhibited by the age of four. 
Experiments have been performed in many types of controlled environments. With ranging variables to observe the monkey seeing monkey do contagious yawning phenomenon. <clears throat> One type of experiment involves having subjects watch a video of people yawning, producing results of upwards of 60% of subjects exhibiting contagious behavior. This number increases when subjects apply a hot pack to their forehead while watching the same video. This adaptation supports the theory of yawning we previously discussed. <clears throat> now, those numbers seem st statistically significant, but are they too good to be true? To determine this, I put together an experiment and compared my findings to this data. In my experiment, I put together a controlled environment where subjects would be observed. It was comfortable, calmy, the temperature was right, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and a constant dim lighting was maintained, also known as my living room. The subjects involved were family members and friends, ranging in age from seven years old to 60 years old. I asked each subject to come in and sit casually and independently watch two short videos. The first video was a short Pixar film named Gary's Game. The second was a video of people yawning who were complete strangers. See links. <coughs> Each video was about three and a half minutes long. These videos were used as independent variables to gauge the reactions of the subjects. As the subjects watched the videos, I observed their reactions outside their peripheral vision and kept log of how many times they yawned during each video, thus measuring the dependent variable. After the experiment, I asked them three questions. First, how many times do you think you yawned or tried to suppress a yawn? Two, did you feel bored or space out at all? Three, when do you think people yawn and why do you think they do so? I also observed how many times they yawned while they answered the questions. After all 20 subjects participated, I compiled the data by use of Excel tables and graphs. I then compared my data to experimental claims of others by measuring statistical significance. My findings showed favorable results to support previous experiments. In my participant group, I found that 85% of subjects yawned at least one time during the video. However, not one participant yawned during the Pixar film. This shows that the first and second variable movies were good at producing results as independent variables. No one was supposed to yawn at the Pixar film, and no one did. When analyzing group data and categories shown here in this graph, we can see that yawning decreases with age. This dependent variable also shows support to another hypothesis, that we as humans tend to empathize with less people the more we age. Also worth mentioning is gender had no bearing on individual results, seen here and here. So, what can we gather from these results? Is there enough that evidence that we can support the theory that yawning is contagious and due to an empathetic response? While my results do favor past experiments, I strongly think that there needs to be more testing involved. My test group was small by comparison. Also, more variables could have been covered, such such as time of day of the experiment, whether or not the subjects had recently eaten or gotten adequate sleep the night before, socioeconomic status, and education level, to name a few. One last factor that should be addressed is familiarity. People tend to be more empathetic of the people they are closer to, namely family, friends, peers, and colleagues. By showing a video of perfect strangers, my 
subjects could have felt less empathy, therefore yawning contagiously less, than if the video contained people they had a true connection with. That all taken into consideration, I believe my results support the hypothesis, but weakly so, and the experiment could be continued with more variables considered. Thank you.